Previously in the recap, a Shutton gamer got summoned inside the game by two girls named Rem and Shara, and the problem with them was also soon revealed. First it was Rem, who was caring for the soul of the most powerful demon, Lord Krebsklum, and Diablo now decides to save Rem from it, and for Shara, she is the princess of the elf kingdom but ran away from her home because of her brother. He wanted to have a child with her, and she was opposed to it, so for her own freedom she ran away, but unfortunately he found them again. But Shara was still bent on her decision not to go with him but then he insisted that he would come again. Now, as the story continues, Shara is still a little bit nervous so to relieve some stress, Diablo shows her a way to brew a healing potion that is fast and effective. But then Shara and Diablo heard the music of the flute, and after hearing it, Shara kind of lost her mind and left with her brother, Diablo was out of commission, thinking that Shara had left him. Rem couldn't believe that Shara of all people would lie about her decision. She is clumsy and, in short, dumb to lie about her decision to stay with them, then that rang the bell in Diablo's mind that he heard a song and right after it Shara started acting differently. He threw his gloomy mood in the dustbin and followed Shara's trail. As for Shara, she was all tied up in a tent by his brother all this time, he was just after her body and stooping even lower. Shara released a slime that fed on clothing to make her more embarrassed and to harass her sexually right then and there. But fortunately, Diablo arrived in that moment after dumping all of the elves that stopped him from entering his tent. He was up to no good and wants to manipulate Shara's mind again into submission, but as the owner of the slave collar she was wearing. Diablo ordered her to speak her decision out without any restrictions, and her will was to stay with Diablo and Rem and not to return to the elf kingdom. Kira can't take it that he can't obtain what he wants, typical of a noble, so he summons a hydra which is considered a forbidden summon in the elf kingdom and has the power to destroy the entire world. But as an elf princess, Shara also got an inside look at its weakness, that the dragon contains a core in its body, and by destroying it, the dragon would turn into a summon crystal again. But the thing she didn't know was that the core is moving constantly in its body, so it's likely impossible to know its location. But Diablo had an idea, that is to use an electric spell from the center of its body, and by that, his entire body would explode with his core obviously. Diablo can't take his nonsense and wanted to kill Kara to put an end to this matter, but Shara stopped him because somewhere in her heart she still had a feeling of family for him. But his luck is shit as his head rolled out by a clean hit from the lord of the town named Ray. An elf, trespassed the territory of humans with elf troops, there he relayed punishment from his accord. And for further investigation into it, he wanted to capture the princess Shara as a key factor in this matter, and so he trapped Diablo in a barrier. But Diablo found the weak point of the barrier and destroyed the barrier and stood in his way. Ray is over level 100, so he is by far stronger than Diablo had thought. He read his moments and set up a trap in the field, but Ray got a bit overconfident in his speed and stepped on a mine, giving an opening to Diablo, which he didn't miss. But it was also an act just to lure in Diablo, and right that moment, Ray got hit by several thunder bullets. Prolonged, and Diablo had also burned up much of his MP, so make him back out of this fight. Diablo tried to intimidate him, so Ray threatened them with reporting this to the king, but Alicia also said that she would also report that Ray made a move on his own that could have led them to war. So now he wasn't in any position to do anything, so bearing that shame, he backed off. Then Alicia reported this to the king, and then the matter between kingdoms was resolved somehow, but the new issue was this new guy named Saddle. Who was a believer in the church and would torment anyone to death who he seemed to believe was a believer in the demon king. And it just so happens that he is getting to Falterra because the priest did a prophecy of the demon king revival in the Faltra town. And it could be none other than Rem herself. Unaware of this upcoming storm, she was teaching the summoning to Shara, and with her guidance, she summoned a bird with which she could observe anything that bird saw. After this, when they were worn out and in the middle of the bath, the commander of the fallen got there because she sensed the demon lord's aura from her. All the fallen wanted was to resurrect the demon, and Rem also wanted to get rid of the thing that was inside of her, but her life could be at stake for resurrecting the demon lord. And there Edelgard offers them her help. She knows a way with which they can extract the demon lord from her without killing her, but the issue was how can they trust a fallen being in this matter. They also had no other option but to give it a try, so they agreed to meet her at the summoning tower. But then they still had second thoughts on this note and met Saddleback in the alley. 
He seemed convinced that he is a god because of his powers, so much so that he was picking a fight with Alicia. Rem couldn't take his behavior, so she tried to stand up for her, and Sadler couldn't take it that a demi-human had the audacity to raise her voice. So he used his self-proclaimed divine powers granted by gods on her. But Diablo knew at a glance that it's just a magic trick that doesn't require a chant, so Sadler tried to use that power on Diablo, but his magic reflected the magic on him back. So his lackey took him away with the shame that Saddle got beaten by a demon. So as per their decision, they arrived at the summoning tower to extract the demon lord, and the quickest way was to make a hole in her body and take out the demon lord. But that could obviously kill her, so they can only use the hole she already has in her body, which means her crouch, you know. And among them, only Diablo had that much power to perform the extraction, so with all the embarrassment, he shoved his hand there and took out the demon lord with his mana. Yet somehow her real form was that of a lowly demon lord without any of her dominating memories whatsoever of destroying mortals and all, even more so when she was hungry and Shara offered her cookies. She was captivated by it. And Adelgard didn't want her to be like that, but what's surprising is that Alicia was on her side, claiming that Krebsklum, the mighty demon lord, should perish the mortals from this world. And Diablo also knew him since he had defeated him in the game, the fallen wanted to offer the lives of the mortals behind her, which he strongly opposed. She didn't want to harm even a single mortal, which was the polar opposite of what the demon king did. So that fallen came to the conclusion that the resurrection of the demon king was incomplete and to complete it she must die, but then Rem saved her and Diablo took the situation in his hands. For a fallen, his speed and strength were unmatched, but when it came to raw power, Diablo has the upper hand. Then with that defeat, he flew away, and as a fallen Edalgard, he chose to stay in the forest to await Kerbsklum's command. Then Diablo told the situation to Celestine, head of the Mage Association, and looking at Krebsklum, she saw nothing but an innocent child, so she also chose to hide her identity. But Alicia had some alternative motives while Shara and Diablo got a little bit ahead. She took Krebsklum away, but Rem noticed it so followed her. As things stand out, she reveals that she is also a demon king worshipper and wants Krebsklum to destroy the Motril race. From a young age, her parents were always on her head that she couldn't do this or that, and when she became a knight to protect innocent people. The king gave her an order to give priority to humans and ignore the demi-humans. She couldn't take the twisted mindset of the society, so she shook hands with the fallen to resurrect the demon lord, for she framed Rem into a demon lord worshipper to Sadler. He took Rem to his place to give her a hellish death. Seeing her, Krebsklum wasn't able to keep her calm, but the promises she made to her that she can't harm mortals kept her from making any moves, but she wasn't able to keep her words from coming out. So Saddle chose to deal with her first, and Rem then shielded her, and even then, Sadler, he killed Rem right in front of her. Now Krebsklum wasn't able to hold back. She just experienced the death of someone she loved, and because of it, she got out of control, and her unsealed power was now damaging the barrier of the town. And all the fallen were also gathered to attack the town any moment the barrier gets down. Diablo was also on the search for Rem and Krebsklum since they just vanished without a word, and while searching for them, they saw their location, and as they arrived, Rem was lying on the ground. So to save her, Diablo gave his entry portion of healing potion to her. And in the meantime, he took on Krebsklum himself. She wasn't in her right mind, so Diablo used a unique yet deadly spell on her, and while Rem got healed up, she went straight to her without hesitation because she knew Krebsklum would return to her normal form again after looking at Rem. And now, Alicia and Edward's plan has failed, and who knows what might happen to them now, other than them? Krebsklum is also a concerning matter if she were left free like that, so Diablo used the enslavement ritual to turn her into his slave so that she could stay with Rem and Shara. But then at night, while everything seemed to be over, Alicia came barging in and took Shara hostage, only for one request. Krebsklum is a demon lord with the power to heal her fallen subjects, so she wanted her to heal Eagleguard. Because other fallen punished her, her plan to revive the demon lord failed, and as her partner, she protected Alicia and she wanted to do the same.